space, the final frontier. Every night, humans look up to the night sky to the sight of thousands of stars, leading our imaginations to explode with myths and legends of these constellations. Or at least we used to. In this modern age, we defy our natural instinct of sleep to stay awake longer into the night, using light to help guide us through the dark. And though it does bring us many conveniences, there are still costs. And one of those is light pollution. The overuse of street, car, and other unnatural misdirected lights are what creates the issues of light pollution. It washes out starlight in the night sky, interferes with astronomical research, disrupts ecosystems, and even has adverse health effects for our sleep patterns. Though while many small remote towns in many countries get to experience a beautiful night sky, the same can't be said about cities like New York and London, which are engulfed with light pollution. So, let's say you live in a big city but still want to experience a beautiful night sky in the comfort of your home? Well, that's where this comes in. The Sega Toys Homestar. In 2005, Sega Toys collaborated with engineer Takayuki Ohira, the engineer behind the planetarium projector Megastar, and created a planetarium for the home. This home planetarium has the capability to cast projections of thousands of stars onto your ceiling all through the use of projection discs. Since its 2005 inception, the Homestar has gone through many iterations. But today, Sega Toys focuses on two main products, the Sega Homestar Original and the Homestar Flux, coming in at 149 and 229 USD respectively. At the $149 mark, the Sega Homestar Original is a more approachable product in terms of its price. Weighing in at 1.21 pounds, this product can project up to 60,000 stars using its 3 watt LED projector light. With a projection distance of 150 centimeters to 230 centimeters and a diameter of roughly 270 centimeters, which is broad enough to cover most small bedroom ceilings. This sturdy plastic device works with small, high definition discs that can be swapped in and out with ease. Two of these discs are included with the product. One depicts the Northern Hemisphere night sky, and its companion disc shows an addition of lines to help you spot those constellations. The only catch is, it does require some fine tuning of the focus ring located on the projector, which can often be a nuisance. It's also important to note that the edges of the projection will be softer than the center, though in many instances, this isn't too much of a problem. For an extra $80 comes the Homestar Flux and the perks of a bigger price tag is evident straight away when comparing the packaging. While the classic comes in a basic cardboard box, the Flux is housed in a beautiful white packaging with silver designs throughout. When opening the product up, you will find the Flux has a matte finish as opposed to the basic plastic of the original. While these small touches do give the presentation of a more premium product, how do the internals and functions of the Flux differ from the original? Well, the Flux has an increased wattage from 3 to 5 watts for an increased LED projection clarity, allowing even more stars to shine through with a higher quality image. This addition has a projection focal distance of 120 to 290 centimeters, with a diameter of approximately 290 centimeters, just beating out the cheaper original edition. When viewing the projection from the Flux, there is a clear difference visible in terms of its range, focus, and brightness. Ultimately, choosing the right product will come down to personal preference. While the Flux provides a clearer and brighter image, the original has a softer look to it, providing somewhat of a more life-life experience when it comes to the Northern Hemisphere disc. Though, when it comes to the additional discs, the Flux absolutely crushes the original with its beautiful clarity. And speaking of additional discs, they can be bought separately for $29 US dollars each, with options such as a Galaxy Disc, the Southern Hemisphere Sky, and a Comet Disc, just to name a few. Personally, the Northern Hemisphere star map included with the unit and the Southern Hemisphere are definitely my favourites, though the others are still fun additions. Both home stars include a rotate feature that slowly moves the projection either clockwise or anti-clockwise, a little addition that adds so much to the experience in helping one become entranced. Also included is the ability to see shooting stars pass by. A cool novelty, though these shooting stars don't look particularly realistic. 
And of course, there are the options to switch the device off after a certain amount of time, so you don't have to worry as you fall asleep. That's the technicals of these machines, but what is the actual experience like? If you've ever been to an area not affected by light pollution, and you've been able to see a night sky brimming with stars, you will know it's a view like no other. It takes you out of the now, your mind in awe of all the things that could be out there. The Sega Toys Homestar does an incredible job of replicating that feeling while remaining within the comfort of your home. The feeling of laying in your bed, looking up, entranced as the constellations slowly spin above you. It's an incredible meditative experience, something I do at least once a week before falling asleep. It is difficult to comprehend the impact of this product through a single video, and I do recommend experiencing it for yourself to fully appreciate it. If you're interested in astronomy or want something to help calm you at night, the Homestar Original is a brilliant product. Though I would have to suggest only astronomy enthusiasts pick up the Homestar Flux as it does come with a rather steep price tag. And that's not all when it comes to Homestar. In 2018, Sega Toys in collaboration with The Pocket Company and Ohira Tech released the Homestar VR experience for the PlayStation VR, the Oculus range, Vive and Gear VR. The experience has two versions, a cheaper $10 version and a $35 special edition. How does this experience compare to the physical products and is it worth a purchase? Let's find out. In both editions of the experience you will find three main modes. First up is World Sky Time Travel, which allows you to see the night sky from places around the world on any date since 1901. It is a cool gimmick to see what the night sky looked like on the day you were born, or just to see the night sky in Antarctica 30 years ago. Whenever and wherever. However, the VR Celestial Planetarium is the main attraction here, with four guides available in both editions, and an additional three in the special edition. This mode is as close to visiting an actual planetarium as you can get without physically going to one. There is another famous constellation just further south. It is a man with half the body of a horse. You guessed it, Sagittarius. You sit in a virtual seat while being guided throughout the different seasons of the night sky. Stories and myths relating to the many constellations being told to you by either a female English narrator, a female Japanese narrator, or a male Japanese narrator. But the only catch is no subtitles. The three extra guides included in the special version of this application are a nice addition, with a standout being a retelling of the classic Milky Way train story, the highlight of the VR Celestial Planetarium mode. Some interesting trophies are also included within the special edition, but they are very few. Having so few feels like a missed opportunity here, as they encourage me to do some research on comets and satellites to try to spot when they would be visible around the world. If more of these achievements were added, it could have provided an extra aspect of education and entertainment value, giving players more hours of enjoyment. And finally, there is the Starry Sky Selection, which places you in a particular spot around the world to see what the night sky looks like from that location. The standard edition has 7 locations, while the special edition includes 10. These locations range from Japan to New Zealand to America, and while they are a nice thought, it's easy to lose interest after a short period of time. This is where my biggest criticism comes into play. These locations could be gorgeous to look at, but unless you have a high resolution VR headset, you will not get much joy and wonder from this application. And with the extra $25 slapped onto the special edition, I would suggest passing on this, unless you are incredibly interested and have a high resolution VR headset. And there we have it, Sega Toys Homestar in two different formats. While I don't entirely recommend the VR versions, unless you are fortunate enough to find it on sale, I do highly suggest picking up the physical product, whether that be the original or the Flux, depending on your interest and budget. This product really does open the doors for those in heavily light polluted areas, and for some, it's an opportunity to see the stars in a way they might never do otherwise. A neat little gadget indeed. <laughs>